Hello and welcome to the 2019 Turbo Smart Ultimate Streetcar. A competition held alongside the Tuner's Edge GTR Challenge and Drag Battle at Cootamundra Airport. Now in the past we've given the Ultimate Streetcar Award to the quickest car that simply drove to the track and left under its own power. Well thanks to Turbo Smart, this year we've stepped it up, we've introduced a whole bunch of different judging criteria and a handling track. So first up, let's take a look at that judging criteria, then we'll take a look at the competitors and then see how they went. Each person has a different opinion on what a streetcar is, and you can't please everyone. But we came up with a judging system that we feel encompasses all the things that make a streetcar and allows each car to exploit its strengths to even the score. Judging was broken down into six categories. Presentation judging, engineering judging, drivability, lap time, ET and mile per hour. Presentation judging is worth 10 points and broken down into theme, wheels, interior, engine bay presentation, exterior mods and wow factor for a total of 10 points out of 100. It was judged by fellow YouTuber Ricardo Williams from Cardo underscore GTR. Engineering judging was done by the engineers from TurboSmart and broken down into workmanship, brakes, tyres and wheels, cooling system, drivetrain, suspension and safety mods worth 10 points out of 100. All of these are judged against the car's intended application, not who has the best of each. The drivability test was exactly that, to see how good the car drives and how it would fare for comfort and ease of use in regular weekend driving duties. Make no mistake, these aren't exactly daily drivers, but nor are they trying to be. Having driven hundreds of different cars, it was judged by yours truly and broken down into transmission and clutch smoothness, seats and interior comfort, suspension compliance, aircon and ventilation, noise and vibration, engine responsiveness, and the X Factor for a total of 20 points out of 100. The X Factor is just whether or not the car has something cool about it or whether it may just be a bit dull. The cars then lapped our handling track and they then went down the quarter mile of day one of the Tuner's Edge Drag Battle and GTR Challenge to get their best ET and mile per hour. The cars had to do a minimum of three runs within half a second and five miles per hour of their best time and be able to leave the event under their own power. Lap times, ET and mile per hour are worth 20 points each out of 100 and are scaled with the top car getting the maximum 20 points and the slowest getting five points and the rest scaled in between. So now you know the criteria, let's take a look at the contenders in no particular order. Dennis O'Malley from Grim Performance bought out his R32 Skyline named XR32. The humble GDST now looks like a Godzilla thanks to all the genuine GTR body parts and also spruced up with carbon side skirt extensions and rear wing extension. Cosmos racing wheels with hand cooked tyres are used for street duties and some 275 drag radials are used to try and put down some power. The big surprise and reason for the plates is under the hood a Barra engine conversion. The 4-litre straight 6 has forged internals courtesy of Mix Motorsport and a 6766 turbo is strapped to the side which not only is responsive but makes 950 horsepower. Plasma Man inlet manifold and intercooler, Howtech Elite 2500 ECU and all the fruit such as the surge tank and fuel system in the boot, the airbox and plumb back blower valve are a nice touch of engineering. The T56 gearbox has an S1 sequential shifter on top and underneath there is MCA red coilovers, hard race arms and white line sway bars. R32s might be 30 years old but they still look awesome and there's so much you can do to them and this car is just plain cool. Our favourite thing about the car would have to be that it's got a bar in it and it causes a lot of hate so it's good fun to have something different and yeah, pretty much keen to have a go racing anything this weekend, but there's a blue Audi out there which would be a bit of fun to line up. We'd really like to run a 10 this weekend, see if I can do it and go from there. Next up is the opposite end of the spectrum by being modern and so well equipped from factory, Mark Saguna's R35 GTR from Precision Racing. It has a PR12 engine, 
TSM Elite Plus 58mm turbochargers, MoTeC M1 ECU, larger inlet manifold, intercooler and piping, an upgraded fuel system, and makes a little under 1,200 wheel horsepower. To handle that, it has a Stage 4 Sheptrans transmission upgrade. You could do all this and look stock, but Mark's car looks killer with the boot lip spoiler, side skirt extensions, front lip and wide body front guards, and dropped over 20 by 11 inch TE37s wrapped in Toyo 888R rubber. It also has air cup suspension too meaning better practicality for the streets of Sydney. It backs it all up with an 8.4 at 164 miles per hour at the track with only one attempt, thanks to not being teched. Mark's car is a complete package and designed as an all-rounder street car from the get-go and will be tough to beat. First time I've been to Cootamundra, yeah, so I'm just going to give it a red-hot crack and hopefully take out the Streetcar Challenge uh, competition that they've got this year. My favourite thing about the car uh, probably is the lift kit. It really turns this car from a bit of a hassle, like low car, to an everyday street car. I can take it to shopping centres, over speed humps, anywhere, and uh, you know, it really just makes it a much more enjoyable car to drive. Back to hardcore 90s JDM is Dion from Fabtech Global's Evo 5. It's built more towards handling, but the Cootamundra bug has had him chasing nines without changing the street handling setup. Menacing in black, the factory kit doesn't need much done, but the Enki RPF1 wheels wrapped in Advan 8008Rs and the headlight duct complete the look. The built 4G63 houses a 2.2 stroker and all the fruit, and you can see all of Fabtech Global's handiwork in the engine bay. They are hyper-tuned distributors, so it uses their inlet manifold and intercooler. EFR9180 turbocharger, upgraded fuel system, and Mtron ECU means it has all the good gear. There's also some nitrous on board to help it spool, and it's capable of over 800 horsepower. It may not be modern, but it's old school JDM tough and high with the X Factor and plenty of cool bits to look at. I like coming to Cootamundra because there's no limits. Doesn't matter if you don't have a roll cage, no officials are gonna stop you. This is the third time and it's been great every, every time. Favorite thing about the Evo 5 is the Samsonis sequential gearbox. The noises it makes, everyone looking at it because of the straight cut and flat shift is awesome. Of course, I'd like to race all the Evos that are coming to Cootamundra this weekend and that bloody RS3. From JDM to ADM, it's Joe from Precision Racing's, formerly Hoontune, XR6 Turbo. The sedate looking sedan hints at performance with Brembo front brakes and 19 inch FPV wheels, while the interior is silver taxi spec with leather armchairs, but under the hood is a monster. Joe refers to this engine as a slapper with aftermarket rods, but stock FG pistons, a basic ported head and cams, and using parts they just had laying around. With a Garrett 76mm turbo, Plasma Man intercooler and inlet manifold easily makes a thousand horsepower through the HT1000 ZF6 built transmission. The XR6 won't win any beauty pageants, but it will smoke out the contestants and spectators alike. Uh, we love coming to Cootamundra just for the challenge, um, trying to get such a big heavy hunk of taxi down an um, ordinary runway or, or street-like surface. Um, it's, a, it's a real challenge. Favourite thing about the car would have to be um, just the, the overall drivability of it. So we can get in on a weekend, go for a cruise, uh, air conditioner, cruise control. It doesn't use too much fuel. Do what you have to do and then go to the racetrack and run a nine second pass and drive it home. I think I probably want to have a crack at the RS3, but nah, look, all jokes aside, we're just here to have some fun. Uh, happy to race whoever you know, in the, the real drive category. Um, just have some fun. Back to modern technology and luxury, and it's a car that the internet is convinced that we think is the greatest on earth. Jason's Audi RS3. Audi levels of luxury and performance are already on point with this car, but it doesn't take much to get some extra grunt and supercar performance out of the RS3. High flow turbo, upgraded fuel system, aftermarket intercooler, exhaust and intake, as well as E85 and methanol injection, and a retune of the ECU gives an extra 200 horsepower over stock and the ability to run 10 flat at the track. But the big question is, can it beat any barra-powered vehicles at Cootamundra? This is my first time at Cootamundra. I come here to show the Barra boys what the Audis can do. The thing I like most about the Audi, looks pretty stock. My wife lets me drive it whenever I want. 
It's pretty fast, an all-around package. I've been looking through the cars. Probably the person I want to race most would be Dennis. He's got a 32 with a Barra motor. Probably a bit better because it's not such a heavy car, so he's probably got more of a closer race. And we'll see how it goes against a 1,000 horsepower Barra in the light car. Our last competitor is the quickest and fastest R35 in Australia. Lance's Mad 35, built and tuned by Precision Racing. It's gone 8-1 at 179 miles per hour at the track before being booted for no cage and shoot. It is a street car after all. It has a PR16 engine package combined with twin Garrett GTX 3582R Gen 2 turbochargers, blowing into upgraded intercoolers and a Boost Logic inlet manifold with 12 injectors controlled by a Motec ECU and it has a Motec dash to replace the factory one. The transmission is a Sheptrans Stage 5 with upgraded clutches required to handle over 1,600 wheel horsepower. Raised wheels wrapped in drag radials, also a necessity. Mad 35 has the power to destroy the competition on the drag strip, but can all that power be harnessed and tamed as a streetcar? Let's find out. Well, I've never actually been here before, but I'm actually looking really forward to it because my car I have trouble racing it at the tracks now around Australia, so um, I'm actually looking forward to opening it up here and seeing what it can do. All right, what's the favourite thing about my car? Power. <laughs> I'm addicted to it now. Uh, so it's, you know, it's putting out over 1,500 horsepower on the wheels and it's uh, a lot of fun. Who do I want to race this weekend? I want to race my old mate Mark Saguna. The first stage of the TurboSmart Ultimate Street Car is making sure the cars can drive on the street. Competitors meet at the Yas Service Centre near Canberra, an easy central point no matter where you're from, and then drive to Cootamundra without refuelling or breaking down. Once at Cootamundra, cars could prep for the photo shoots, judging and the handling circuit. So the first cab off the rank is Dennis's XR32. Uh, it's a pretty cool conversion. It's pretty logical why you do it. It's a four litre engine, super torquey. And as soon as you get in and drive it, that's the first thing you notice about it is it's super drivable with all of that torque. It's got a bunch of power, what? As much as 900 if you need it, right? But the best thing about an engine like this is I can just be in fourth gear at 3000 RPM and just lean on the throttle a little bit and drive it like a normal car. A lot of big turboed cars with 900 are pretty laggy. This thing still has direct correlation between throttle and power. You can actually still drive it around on relatively light throttle. And um, it's not a difficult sort of car to get around in, to be honest. It's, um, you know, fuel pumps, a little bit of gearbox noise, a little bit of diff noise. It's all pretty normal, but for 900 horsepower, I think that's what I'd want. But just even just light throttle, it's just, Straight on. <laughs> it's um pretty good. <laughs> All up, I just, in summary, Barra just fixes everything. Like it really does. 900 horsepower, but totally accessible usable most of the time as long as you're sensible. You could hurt yourself if you didn't know what you're doing, but you can use the throttle to control the power delivery in this thing so much better than a smaller capacity engine that it just makes it really drivable. And the fun factor, I think, of this car, I'm not going to go drive it the way Dennis can. I know what it could do, but man, you could have a lot of fun in this car. Ooh, Audi. All right, let's see what an RS3 is like when they're a little bit modified. Alright, with 
the internet melting down lately over Barra versus Audi, I've been pretty excited to drive Jason's Audi RS3. This thing is probably one of the most modified ones in the country at the moment, right? It's currently the fastest one. And it's currently the fastest. So just did a 10-1 at 139. Yep. And um, you can feel it rolling on. It is a weapon of a car. But the best thing about this car is 139 mile an hour GDR is actually like, actually pretty wild, but an RS3 just does it like that. The yeah. power is so accessible, it's not funny. But these things are just weapons for handling without even trying. So it's got a hill climb tyre on it at the moment, which is obviously making it, you know, a little bit more vibration, a little bit not as smooth as normal, but I know what these things are like, and when you change it back to a street tyre, it's killer. But when you drive it normal, it's a little bit harsher than a normal RS3, but what I like is the theatre of it makes up for the loss of luxury. So you've still got this comfortable, luxurious interior and everything, but the loudness of the exhaust and the harshness of the, the tune in the transmission for this, which is a little bit, you know, stiffer, yeah. it helps make it more exciting when you do get up it. So cruising along right now, it just feels like a normal Audi, a little bit quieter. But if I go back a gear, stand on it, that is absolutely killer. The five-cylinder sounds like a Gallardo rather than a, uh, a, you know, a small capacity five-cylinder. But being an Audi, it's just like through here, without even trying, it just... Without even trying, it's just quick. Like, that's... Easy to drive. It's just easy to go fast in. And um, as a street car, sometimes you just want that accessibility to power, but... And sleeper. Yeah, and it's you a sleeper. GDR. That's right, with this car, no one expects that you're, you know, 10 1, maybe a high 9 on the right day. No one expects it. So, the sleeper aspect of this car, everyone knows they're quick, but not that quick. And um, the noise this thing makes now is just mental. That is unreal. I really like it. Thanks. Good work. Now, is it going to smoke that bar or what? Pretty easily. It just makes me want to drive one-handed because it's a taxi. Yeah, it's just Kennedy's. It's, it's not, you don't get in it and feel like, yeah, I'm going like, to... Oh, no, you don't. It's not, definitely not. All right, let's see what some freeway cruising feels like in it. So if I wanted to drive normal in manual mode, it's still got enough... I see what you mean, yeah. Wow, that's like very... It's like a little throttle point there where you feel like it hasn't got a heat. Yeah. But as soon as you get kind of past yeah, that... Like five to four grand mark. Yeah, you can kind of feel it's all sort of changing a little bit, so... Yeah. But like, it just drives like a Falcon yeah. in terms of taking corners and stuff. It's not its specialty. I'm not going to... Yeah, yeah, it's not. I'll let, I'll let the time board worry about whether what it does there. I won't let I won't let me um, give you a heart attack by... Oh, good. <laughs> so, um, it's got a heat limiter very quickly, so be ready. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I had to actually put a bit of focus and yeah. thought process into that because yeah. um, there's only a couple of, you can lift off a bit and it's not too bad, there was a bit there where you yeah. kind of back off and it dropped off a little bit, probably too much, but yeah. it's blowing tyres. Oh, it's, these tyres are absolutely rubbish for that. <laughs> it's, it's no street tyre, no size diameter, nothing's going to help. First is a waste of time by the way, it is, yeah. so I'm, I'm better off actually so rolling on in second and roll the throttle on. Still smoking the tyres yeah. at 180 k's an hour. Oh yeah, it'll keep going. I'm telling you, don't give this to someone that can't drive. <laughs> In summary, a Falcon will always be a Falcon, <laughs> right? It's always going to be a car that's an next taxi and you don't deny that, do no you, way. right? It's, it's, you can't change it. No. But the amount of horsepower this thing has is just ridiculous. Like on those tyres, you can breathe on the throttle just a little bit too much and boost, they're gone. <laughs> now you've got to ask yourself, did you build it for that? 
or did you build it to go fast? And really with a car like this, you've got to put a decent tire on it, you've got to set it up for drag racing to put that power down. If you don't, they almost become useless in a way, yeah. unless you just want to do it power skids. It depends how you're going to drive it. So you yeah. can drive it on the street below three and a half grand, and anybody can drive it. You, you, yeah. you won't know the difference. Um, if you're going to go start breathing on the throttle or, or driving yeah. it like in that way, uh, it's just going to torch the tires unless you put radio on it, radials on it. Um, we're not making these a circuit car or anything. It's, nah. it's a straight line car. So um, the good thing is you can just drive it like a normal car yeah. and it's fine. Like the aircon's on. Yeah, you put we're good. There, I'm comfortable, you're comfortable. It, it's like it's below three easy. grand at normal <laughs> throttle pillings. It's just a Falcon. Yeah. But man, what ridiculous when you get on it. Like, I was like having a heart attack yeah. but laughing <laughs> at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Because uh, if you did that by accident in yeah. traffic, it would be painful. But on yeah, if you're yeah. at power cruise or you're here, like you can have exactly. some serious fun exactly. if you've got the space. But yeah. you just got to be really careful you just with have the to car. This. It. Yeah, it's, it's not very like a, uh, it, it, is, it yeah. gave me a false sense of security <laughs> <laughs> to begin with. Up I'm like, oh yeah, third gear's all <laughs> good, bruh. Yeah. 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 Pull forward. It's just like holy crap. <laughs> but the speedo was still just flying up <laughs> like it didn't care. You just keep clicking gears. Go to go to uh, six, and it'll still be fine. Oh, I just out of control. Mm -hmm. That's your job to do that. I'm just here to make yeah, sure the thing drives all right. <laughs> Thanks, dude. That was a ball. We are on 179 mile an hour worth of power. I just asked him, is there a low power, a medium power, whatever. He goes, there's one. Yeah, there's there's one. one setting, and that one setting is all of it. That's it. Over 1,500 horsepower at the wheels, right. approaching 1,600, 179 mile an hour. This is now the most powerful car we'll have ever driven. Mm. So, you know, you'll love it. <laughs> you'll love Let's go. So this is auto mode, like you're driving a normal GDR, yeah. right? and you watch it be smooth as... No. Right? That's it. Better than stop. No. That's, it. That's, it. <laughs> That's better than an early model, I 35. That's what I'm saying. That's like as good as a 17. That's exactly right. And this How did you do that? 35,000 on the gearbox in it. Every, every gear in its billet. All right, so we're just having a chat outside the car with Lance, and he basically said that this is the most ridiculous thing he's ever been in driven, and it took him a month to almost right. get used right. to being able to drive this thing to its full potential. It is a mental car. The first thing I'm going to say is driving this normally below 3,000 RPM, the gearbox engagement is actually better than factory. It is unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe it. So you don't actually notice the gearbox doing its work until higher in the rev range yeah. when the car That's thinks you're trying to actually go a bit faster. That's right, so driving normally like this, it's just a normal car. But the, a bit, the biggest thing you notice, obviously, is it's just got big turbos on it, and you've lost a little bit of bottom end, but like, not enough to care when you're driving normally. So we're just cruising like we're cruising on the freeway at the moment, and it's still got aircon, right? Yeah, absolutely. Still got aircon, and we're just driving normally. We're in sixth gear right now, we're just cruising along at 100. It's just, other than having a drag radial on it, it's just a normal R35 GDR, and we can talk normally. Yeah. And, it's actually not that loud when you're cruising around. Yeah. So you're telling me that if you want to get used to it, you actually go in manual mode so that you can short shift and control right. and the you, wheel spin. And, and You can feel the boost build and, so, and go into race mode. I'm not going to go straight into being a spastic. We'll just sort of get a bit of a feel yeah, of what this thing feels like. Feels. And Now it's a little bit harsher on the gear change. A little bit more theatre going on. And you can short shift and holy crap. <laughs> that is ridiculous. That was like three quarter easing on. That's right. That's right. You're not and I'm only shifting to like seven. That's right. And it's already feels like an eight second car already. Oh, yeah. Like I've and now I'm hooked and I'm going again. <laughs> so we are on all of it right now. And I can rev to eight and a half if yep. I want to. Yep. Alright, here we go. Are you ready people? We're doing this. I'm full. <laughs> oh wow, the only reason I didn't keep going is I just, well, it's my first hit of it. Like, <laughs> that is just like another level over everything I've driven. I know. But it just, that was full. Like, you can use it. Yeah, use that. I'm surprised. Like, I, like on the track, it's all over the place. Like, on the, at Sydney last night, it was all over the place. It felt like it was like. All the temps are all still good yeah, to go again? Yeah. All right, here we go. This is just like, you know what? This moment. Don't change gears. Just floor it. You want to try it? Sure. Yeah, All right, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Holy crap! Yeah. That is <laughs> phenomenal. 
Most that doesn't play it. All right, a lot of people say that, like, an after the vibe can be boring because it yeah. does itself. I don't care if it's shifting itself, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> With two of us in the car, that's still oh, 172, yeah. 173, oh, yeah, no, 170. Well, the best I've been in is a car that does 164. Right, right, right. Right? That's, I'm 10 mile an hour up yeah, on that yeah, now, yeah, but yeah. what a different car. Yeah, that's right. That is. I can feel the wicked on this side, you know. <laughs> To summarise, this car is just warp speed. Like, it is just, like, this is Star Trek shit. This is out of control. That first hit that I gave it, I just, I was just like, what the fuck is going on? And I've been in some fast stuff, right? And I've been in stuff that's wild and moves everywhere. And what I love about this car is, I did it, I go full throttle in my first hit. That's right. And there aren't many cars that run 170 mile an hour that you can have full throttle on your first hit. And I'm not saying anyone could yeah. or anyone should, yeah. but I'm telling you, the fact that I could do that is a testament to the setup of the car, it's a testament to an R35. If you want to have 1500 wheel horsepower and you want to use it, this is the car to That's do it, it in. Exactly and the right. best part was, is when we drove it in auto, below three grand, it drove like a standard R35. That to me is just, uh, mate, exactly I just... Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that will live with me for a That's long right. time. I mean, I never get over it, you know. Oh, this car scares me. On the street, yeah, with a scary. bit narrower room, oh, whoa, scary. man, that's just... It's scary. Like, even, you know, I raced last night, it scares you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're in Mark's R35, 1,200 horsepower at the wheels. It's gone 8.4 at 160, 164. Yeah. That's already mental. <laughs> now, I've driven a 164 mile an hour GDR, and in an R34, they're wild, they're everywhere. Yeah. But the best thing about R35s is they're stable it's they're more stable. attainable. Yeah. Alright, so let's talk about this. The gearbox all been done, it's pretty yeah. much Chep everything from yeah. Chep Trans. Chep Trans stage 4.5, yeah, Motec M1, uh, obviously tuned by Aaron at Precision. It drives like a normal car. Yeah, it's the best thing, I mean, like, even my wife can drive it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, it's, uh, <laughs> but just, <laughs> it's just like I don't even need any throttle or anything to get moving. So, and that's the thing is for drivability, I want to look at when when you when you're not trying to get up it and you're just driving in normal yeah, traffic. Yeah. Can, do you have the ability to just drive yeah. around normally? And this car can do it. So, and I mean that's my whole point of always building a street car, you know. So yeah, yeah, it, it's. I know first and second are probably a waste of time yeah. on these tyres, right? still got GDR suspension in it, so you can still throw it around if you want to. I'm going to leave that to you though, because yeah. I already know what I want to do in a 1200 wheel horsepower 35 through here. I've got to say out of everything I've driven already today and everything I've probably even driven at Cootamundra, this is the most accessible 1200 horsepower, the most accessible 8 second 160 plus car you're ever going to drive. Yeah, Other than a little bit of gearbox noise that gives the game away every now and then, yeah. this doesn't really drive any different to an R35 down low. We no. could just drive around with aircon on, cruise around, it's a little bit like easier down low but that's just turbos but not enough to be worried about it but man if you respect the car and you roll in and you go for it and you understand that it won't have full traction in second and you've yeah. got to actually give it some respect it is totally accessible yes. as a 1200 horsepower car and to me that's incredible that's yeah. and that's exactly what i built it for like when i picture ultimate street car if you take out any other judging criteria and just go off how it drives yeah. to me this is it's the benchmark awesome. Well done, man. Nice words. Go have some fun. Thanks. <laughs> you can drive it again. So I've driven this before. It. You can drive it without nitrous and then with, so you can see the difference. Alright. Alright, I'm back in Dion's car again. I've driven this before on the street, but now it's got bigger turbo, more power, right? That's correct. Yeah. 120 kilowatts. Now, this car is a proper 90s modified JDM car. It's angry. It's a bit rough around the edges. It ain't modern tech. It's 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 the late 90s tech that I love. I love cars like this. Yeah. And they're not meant to be dailies. They're meant to be an adventure. I'd say, chassis-wise, it's old tech. Yeah. But technology-wise... Oh, yeah, the modified tech is good, but... But it does actually drive along still pretty good. It lower RPMs. Yeah, it's got good power. 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 Yeah, it's got good power.
we haven't even really come on boost yet, but we're still moving along like a normal car. So oh, off boost and drive is amazing. Exactly, and that's that's one of the things about a street car is you've got to be able to get around and drive it normally right. if you need to. Yep. And this thing, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit, little bit loud. It's not very rough, actually, to be honest. I mean, I drove it as a daily for 12 months. Yep. I just, just got a new car. I love driving stuff like this, though. Sequential, big turbo, some nitrous to get it on as well. And they're just, they're cranky things, you know? that you just get in and give it little squirts and go yeah 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 it's everything about it is like you gotta be ready yeah so that's 38 pound with no nitrous correct and what does that make 590 kilowatts or so uh it still makes 620 without the nitrous 620 the nitrous is only to bring it on ah right got ya yeah. all right whoa Definitely. Now I see why you got it. Yeah. 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 What a difference. <laughs> right, in summary, the easiest way to explain this car is it is a proper 90s JDM mental car. It has theatre, it has excitement, it has a rush. Like the wow factor that you get of this car for yourself is just epic. Yeah. But when you drive it, you just feel like a bad mother. Not many people make Evos like that, I can tell you. That's, um, that makes over 600 kilowatts with a sequential box, with shift cut and everything. And um, with the nitrous on, it is on hard. And even without the nitrous, still makes over 600 kilowatts. A little bit lazier, but I just said that the way I explain this car is it's, it's the bad motherfucking car, right? You're driving along and you're shifting a sequential box and it's noisy and the gearbox is whining and you can hear the angry cams and you, know, you can feel it coming onto boost even before it does and you're like, oh, I know this is coming. And you just feel good, you feel tough, you feel angry driving it. And you know that everyone's looking at you. You know, everyone is just staring, going, what's that noise? Why is it clunking? It's so lumpy, like, it's just a car that has so much theater and excitement to it, that you almost don't care that it's rough around the edges because that wow factor of driving it makes up for it. Um, I've driven this around the street for an hour before. Yes, I wouldn't drive it for five hours, but just a drive for the hell of it on the weekend. Yeah, no worries, wicked, love it. Well, you've seen how well the cars have gone in the judge section of the TurboSmart Ultimate Streetcar. In our next episode, the drivers and the cars will do the talking in our performance tests. There's the handling track, ET, and mile an hour. See you then.